Buongiorno. Bonjour. Good morning. And that's all for multiple language. <laughs> Let's stay with English. And uh, uh, my, my, my talk today will be uh, about a specific kind of monitoring for uh, health inequalities. And I would like to address with you the, the issue of surveillance as a possible tool for monitoring also health inequalities. And for those uh, uh, that are not familiar with uh, uh, surveillance, uh, here we have a, uh, a definition of surveillance, of a public health surveillance, although we will uh, uh, talk about a more specific surveillance, but public health surveillance from, uh, from uh, the World Health Organization. We know that the word surveillance started uh, in uh, public health uh, only applied to uh, infectious diseases, and still, uh, for infectious diseases, it's a, it's a, a major point. But uh, since uh, uh, the World Health Assembly in uh, 1968, the uh, word surveillance has taken a, a much broader uh, um, concept. And uh, uh, here is the public health surveillance as the, the continuous systematic collection, analysis, and interpretation <coughs> of health-related data needed for the planning, implementation and evaluation of the public health practice. Such surveillance can serve as an early warning uh, uh, to document an impact of the intervention to monitor and clarify the epidemiology of health problems. And this is a broad definition of surveillance. But uh, in the, over the years, and particularly recently, uh, it turns out uh, uh, a specific kind of surveillance that is called behavioral risk factor surveillance. <laughs> Very briefly, why uh, this uh, uh, is an important uh, um, information system in, in the health uh, world? Well, uh, first of all, the focus on NCDs uh, as a major challenge for public health, and I don't think I, had, uh, I have to add anything to that in this audience, it's quite clear. Uh, why they are so important and becoming more and more important, uh, not only in developed countries, but now also in developing countries. And uh, near to NCD, uh, the, the attention is uh, on uh, risk factors. Why? Well, because they are one of uh, the more attackable target for public health intervention. Uh, we know that working on a risk factor, we can avoid uh, a lot of uh, problems of uh, NCDs. And uh, uh, consequently, uh, the health promotion and prevention uh, uh, has become a measure tool for tackling NCD. And health promotion and prevention asked for suitable information to act. And surveillance is one of uh, uh, perhaps uh, the uh, most important source of information for, uh, for this kind of action. Uh, how it works, uh, in some way condition stands to, uh, to do a real surveillance, and I'm just calling a, a, a document that uh, it has been prepared by uh, um, a global working group inside of uh, uh, International Union of Health Promotion uh, and Education. And uh, this is a group of uh, people working on surveillance around the globe and uh, has prepared and written a, a white paper about surveillance. But what are the main characteristics for a surveillance system to, be, to, to, to allow for real surveillance? First of all, it must be systematic. It's not just survey. The survey, uh, um, the survey focus and the survey mission is to produce data. Uh, the mission of surveillance is not only to produce data, it's also to do analysis, to interpret, and eventually to release information useful for action. So this is a, a, a major difference. So, so the survey is only a tool that is used by a surveillance system to, uh, uh, to fulfill uh, the mission of surveillance. And, uh, uh, to do so, it must be systematic, so we must have uh, not only uh, a group of, that, of people that are collecting data, but it, it must be a system embedded in the health system that uh, uh, is uh, uh, doing all the work of uh, 
collecting, analyzing, interpreting, but also listening to what are the information need for action. Uh, and uh, of course, this must be timely. Uh, we cannot use uh, uh, census data for surveillance. Census data are very important, but not for surveillance, or perhaps a, a link to surveillance to interpret uh, several things, as we will see. Uh, but we need timely information. We need to know if what we have done last year uh, has been successful or not, to replanning, to change our plan, and uh, to adapt to uh, the changes in the system. Then, of course, must be specific, and this is a big issue, because uh, uh, we all know that uh, action is local. Think globally, but act locally. And, uh, uh, and quite often, the, the typical health uh, uh, surveys are referred uh, uh, to national level and perhaps a regional level, but they do not go local. Instead, I think it's very important that uh, uh, surveillance is capable also to release uh, local, uh, information at the local level. And of course, link to action. So, uh, just to bring some example, now I, I, I came uh, from the international experience to, to, the, uh, to the Italian experience, because I think uh, what it has been done in Italy, it, it's quite peculiar. It's not the first uh, good surveillance system in the world, uh, because uh, perhaps uh, uh, the first one has been developed in the US uh, through the CDC in 1984, and now it's running since then, collecting millions of interviews so far. So it started only in 2007, but I think it has some peculiar characteristics that I want to share with you, just to uh, show you how can surveillance work and eventually how can surveillance help in monitoring uh, health inequalities. So this is Italy, uh, 20 regions, uh, 57 million of inhabitants, and uh, the health is organized uh, at a national level, but the measure organization is a regional level, and the action is at local level, having uh, uh, the local health unit. So it's, it's a way similar to Canada in, um, in many ways. So the, 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 uh, the state, uh, the province, yeah, region for Italy, and, and the local health unit. Okay. Um, and, uh oh. I don't have the information about, uh, I'm missing one slide, uh, the information about the, uh, the surveillance system uh, is called PASI, STEPS, and uh, it stands for Health Progresses by the Local Health Unit in Italy. So basically every health unit is collecting its own data, and uh, every month. So we have really a situation that is geographically uh, very specific, and also timely, very specific. And moreover, and this is very interesting because I think it's quite unique in the international uh, landscape, uh, data are collected by uh, personnel of the prevention department at the local health unit level. And this is kind of, 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 of strange, perhaps. It's not the standard, uh, there are not professional of data, they are professional of health, but it produced uh, uh, some incredible result, unexpected from my point of view. I'm a statistician, so I, I'm uh, used to study all the uh, methodological aspects. And here we go, here we have a survey that is carried out by nurses, but the result is we have 87% of response rate. It's a mangoes, unbelievable. But why that? I've got only one explanation. It's because the telephone call comes from the local health unit, from person that citizen recognize as the, the one that uh, they usually help them when they have a health problem. And so they do answer. We have a, a refusal rate of 9%. So, uh, and, and this is part of, of, of an interesting result. The other interesting result is the, the data use. It's always difficult to uh, have uh, uh, decision makers also, particularly at the local level, to use data. And instead, because these data are produced by the local health unit, 
now they're used at the local health level. And so uh, here we go that eventually, uh, particularly about uh, health, public health and health promotion, because uh, the, the report of the local health unit are full of administrative data and about uh, how many people, people went into the hospital and cost and things. But in the past, we had very little data about public health and health promotion. And now there is a chapter, perhaps it's a bigger chapter in the uh, report of the yearly report of the local health unit with some data about public health. And that's certainly good news. But uh, uh, I come to the point, what uh, uh, surveillance can do about inequalities and, uh, and helping in monitoring inequalities. Uh, this is a standard uh, uh, analysis and uh, uh, have taken smoking prevalence and break down by education or uh, income. And I, I don't think you're surprised about these figures. We have seen several uh, graphs like this uh, uh, in the past and, uh, and also here at this conference. So it's good to know, but, but particularly at national level, what's the news? I mean, we know this is a problem. We know there is a gap. And, uh, uh, but what, what else can do uh, uh, the surveillance system? Well, first of all, uh, it can bring uh, these kind of data to the local level. And for instance, we can see that in some local health unit, the differences are much bigger than in others. And this is information for action. So uh, the decision makers can ask why we, are, we have more differences than in other places. And so there is a benchmark that can be put also for uh, objective of a, a health promotion plan or, or thing like that. And, and this is a good information also for programs how they should be carried out because quite often we forget about this. And so we think that because we are doing health promotion, this immediately will produce a, a reduction in inequalities. But we know this is not true and there is a lot of literature about it. Then uh, another uh, great uh, opportunity is, is that of studying the evolution. First of all, to show trends. This is, I've, I've just taken, this is a, a publication that the system produces uh, uh, almost monthly in the, um, in the most important uh, Italian epidemiological journal. Uh, there are just short presentations, just, just one graph. But uh, uh, this is about smoking and sm smoking by uh, income classes. And you can see the, the, the importance of the information in this case uh, and the the differences that uh, are at the beginning of the data collection in 2007, but uh, this is uh, the important information. Uh, is smoking in the lower class uh, is not only much higher, but it's not changing over time. It's steady. While in the better off, uh, smoking is, as you can see, decreasing. And although it's not a big decrease, but it's something as almost 1% uh, uh, every year. So at, eventually, if you think in five year times, I mean 10 year times, uh, what are already uh, incredible differences uh, among social classes, that will be much worse. So this is information for action. And, uh, but, uh, I want to show you also this one because it's not all bad news. Uh, Sometimes we are uh, we, uh, studying the evolution of, of the thing. Uh, we can see some success, and I think this is a, a, an interesting example about cervical uh, screening in the last three years. Um, in, in Italy, we are quite well, uh, well off. As you see on average, we have more than 75% of women uh, that are undergoing a regular screening. But there are, there are differences, as you can see, uh, uh, among social classes. And the good news, if you see the middle class, uh, is basically uh, get at the same level in only five years, get uh, at the same level of the upper class. The other 
part, it's not such a good news uh, that is uh, instead the lower class is steady. But uh, we do have an answer for, for this question. So why it's happening? Why it's happening this way? And this, uh, I think, uh, it's uh, the, the great opportunity, and, but also the great challenge when we are talking about monitoring uh, health inequality. Because uh, if it is important to monitor health inequality, it's, uh, I think it, now it's uh, even more important to understand why they're happening and what, what we could do about them. Because it's very true that uh, the gap is there, but it is very true that since uh, the Marmot uh, report, uh, uh, the gap is still there. Didn't change too much if you go uh, to any kind of, of uh, uh, global statistics. And so, uh, so now it is dramatically important not only to show the gap, but also to try to understand the gap. Just uh, an example of uh, what, what we could do. So first of all, we start from the evolution, then we uh, look at the uh, territorial differences, because that's part, that's one part, uh, as it has been said in the previous presentation, uh, of the social determinants. And so we see that there are great, uh, great uh, differences. And uh, uh, here, just one slide to present, uh, uh, to synthesize a study that is a, 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 a bit complicated that we have tried, to put together social determinants such as uh, uh, income and education, but also uh, looking at Italy not as a whole, but uh, uh, as a, a different welfare system that uh, we are talking about welfare system uh, yesterday evening. And uh, uh, a colleague of mine uh, has done this study trying to determine at the regional level which were the welfare system, and we found out seven different categories of welfare system. And then, so we, we have seen the, the outcome, uh, intermediate outcome, the, the, the screening, uh, as, uh, uh, with a lot of possible explanation, and this is the result. So social determinants are important, as you can, oh, perhaps I got this. It's working, yeah, okay. Social determinants are important by themselves, but also in relationship with welfare system. So in some region with different welfare system, social determinants are more important than in other. Plus, and this, uh, I think it's, uh, it's a very important information for uh, practical purposes, it's also the process, it's also the policy uh, that make the difference. Because in the region in which it was higher, the presence of uh, not only of, of the general offer of the screening, but of a specific, I would call, health promotion intervention that is going with a letter and with a telephone call to the person interested, well, this has produced a change by itself, but also in the relationship with the, the welfare system, how the welfare system was organized. So I, I think we, we need of, uh, these kind of information. So to, 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 to conclude, and uh, um, we have tried to we have tried to, to, to put this in a, in, editor, in an editorial uh, uh, that has been published the last month on the International Journal of Public Health. Uh, it remains critical to uh, continuously monitoring the social determinant of health, in a sense that uh, uh, you have seen how much important it is to have information over time and not just now and then, not just after five years, because that's, that's not enough information to understand the evolution of, of uh, uh, social inequalities and the health inequalities. So for doing this, we need good surveillance system in, in the sense that I've quoted before, but uh, we need also a good investment, both, I would say, on data collection, but. Uh, uh, perhaps now more, uh, since we have a lot of data, and, and uh, uh, the, France, the, France, the French experience uh, has been uh, a good uh, witness of this, but now we need a profound emphasis in depth analysis. We need more analysis, because what we want to understand is also the mechanism. So we should go beyond mere description of social determinant of health.
Thank you very much.